Good morning. Jersey family, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's good to be here. I think I was last year, maybe in November of last year, but I like being here in March. The promise of spring for all the March babies in the house, you know. March is a good month because you're starting to, you know, winter is starting to, it's starting to turn and you're going, there's hope is in the air. But you guys can sit. So good to be here. Excited to be here. I had my um, boom chia already. Um, I had acai bowl, you know, the store right out there. Josh, the owner, he said he tunes in on YouTube because he can't come here, but he like watches it, you know, with our online family. So greetings to Josh and our online family that are joining us here. But um, I'm excited to be with you all. I'm going to just jump into the word, if that's okay. I'm going to just jump in the word. So I'm going to be reading out of Matthew 11, uh, from verse uh, 28 today. I'm reading out of the Passion Translation, in case you're curious. Um, sometimes people wonder, they're like, that doesn't match up with the words that I'm reading. Um, but this is the Passion Translation. And, and it says this in the, in the um, title of this section. It says, Jesus invites everyone to come. And so starting with verse 28, it says, Are you weary, carrying a heavy burden? Then come to me. I will refresh your life, for I am your oasis. Simply join your life with mine. Learn my ways, and you'll discover that I'm gentle, humble, easy to please. You will find refreshment and rest in me. That's pretty good. That's pretty good of, of a passage. So I've been, um, I've been living in New York now for 13 years. Um, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, normally, sometimes when I preach, you'll hear one person go, woohoo! Cleveland. Um, not today. Not today, though. Uh, that's not that, this room. But um, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, and a, a kind of a rural, we ended up in a rural, my sister is here today, a rural part of Cleveland, Ohio. So New York City is very different than the world that I grew up in. Never expected to live in New York. And, you know, when I first moved here, I moved here because my husband had got a job in the city. Like, I was just like, I don't get it. Like, it just seems really dirty and loud. And a lot of people, like, get me out of here. But now I can't imagine living anywhere else, you know, which is so crazy. Like, I've just fallen in love with the Northeast. I've fallen in love with the city. And, like, whenever I travel home, I go home to Ohio, I'm, like, really excited when the plane is landing back. Like, whether it's I see the, like, skyline of New Jersey or New York, doesn't matter. I'm excited to be back home. And I just, I feel really mobile when I'm in the city because, you know, we have really great public transportation here. You know, we got the New Jersey Transit, you know, Metro North, that's to get to Connecticut. Uh, you know, the Long Island Railroad, you know. I love it. And of course, the MTA, the subway system in New York, it is the absolute best and the absolute worst um, ever. You know, because you'll, you'll see, yes, I'll, get, I'll take some claps for that. Because you'll, um, you'll see the most beautiful things. You know, like people, like, you know, you'll see somebody, like, with a stroller, and somebody's, you know, two, two men will go, let me help you get that down the stairs, you know? And people go, hey, you dropped that. Like, you just see the most beautiful things, but you also see the most crazy things, okay? There's Showtime. Like, I remember the first time I was on the train for Showtime, and I'm like, what is happening? Like, his foot just swung by my head. Like, I don't understand what is happening here. People feel like they can eat all kinds of things on the subway. I'm like, my goodness, yes, I can smell the onion in your sandwich. We're all participating in what you are eating here. Okay? I mean, people, there was a Thanksgiving meal. Did you guys see this? Uh, there was a Thanksgiving meal people had in one of the trains last year in the subway. People listening to music way too loud. There's no pants subway day. I mean, like, where in the world? Like, why do we have that? You know, there was a no pants subway. Like, you just see crazy things. And people will risk their limb to get on that train. Okay? <laughs> like, whether it's their foot you know, their arm, one time, my sister and I were on the train, and this guy, he just got his head stuck through. Like, his head was just popping through like this. And he's just, he's just waiting, and we're just like, we just are like, first we're horrified, then we just start cracking up, because we're like, what is happening? 
What is the conductor going to do? And he's just like that. And then the conductor, you know, he's just like, I, I mean, what am I, the train can't move with this guy's head, you know, in the, in the, in the, but he like, so he opened the door and got the guy in, but it is the best and the worst, but it'll get you everywhere that you need to be. You could go to Coney Island, you could go to Yankee Stadium, all of these things. And I love when I go to different countries to see, you know, kind of their public transportation system. So, you know, you'll go to Paris and they call it Le Metro, you know, and it's like, it's like their train stations are color coded, you know, like you get there and like the seats match the color of the train, like they, which is classic French people, of course they're doing that. You know, and then in London, it's the tube, okay? It's a tube, but it closes at like 10 p.m. I don't know what they're doing. I'm like, y'all are like in a city, you need to, to open it longer. But um, I remember years ago when we traveled to London, and, uh, and I think they, they might still do it here, but not as much. But you were getting on the train, you'd hear this British voice go, mind the gap. They say, mind the gap. And, and the, the wording of the English warning was created in the late 1960s for the London subway system. And it says, the phrase alerted riders to be, we are, be aware of the space between the platform and train cars. You know, I love in this passage, Jesus is telling everyone, it's an invitation to come to him because he knows that we're where when we if we come to him we're set there's peace there there's strength there there's rest oasis and refreshment but sometimes there is a gap between us and him and so today I've titled this message mind the gap mind the gap because I want to talk about being aware of the distance between us and Jesus and he's asking us to come to him can I just pray for us before we move forward father we thank you so much for this day Thank you for our Jersey family and online family, Father. We thank you, Lord, that no one is here by mistake. And you have some work and something you want to share with us today. Prepare our hearts to receive it and use me in Jesus' name. Amen. Mind the gap. Say to your neighbor, mind the gap. Fantastic. I want to talk today about two things that we need to do to mind the gap. Two things that we need to do to mind the gap. The first thing we need to do is we need to close the gap. We need to close the gap. And in order to do, close the gap, we need to do a few things. First, we need to turn down the noise in our life. We need to turn down the external noise. You know, I love one of my favorite miracles that Jesus performs in the Bible is the loaves and fishes. Like, if I'm doing offering, I'm usually sharing. I love the loaves and fishes. Just love it. And I noticed that a few passages before it, before the miracle of the loaves and fishes, Jesus is spending some time with his disciples. And so like in Matthew, Matthew oh, sorry, Mark, Mark 6, actually it's in all of them. It's in Matthew, Mark, John. But um, in Mark 6, he says this to them. He says, come with me by yourself to a quiet place and get some rest. And it said before that, he noticed that they hadn't had a chance to eat. So before the miracle happened, he took them away for some time of rest. They had been ministering and serving others. And he says, come away with me and get some rest. And I think sometimes Jesus is asking us to do the same, to build those rhythms into our life. We need to get away with him and get some rest before we go out again. And I think for so many of us, busyness can keep us from doing this. You know, like life just gets so noisy with our schedules, our busy, busy schedules. And we need to make sure we're building margin into our life. Rhythms of going out and coming back in. Pause in your day to reconnect with him. Time of your day to hear from him. Building practices that promote health for the rest of your life. You know, Brett and I, we uh, last, last Christmas, 2021, we were supposed to go home. And then I found out I was sick. I tested, like, for positive for COVID. It was, like, the third time I'd gotten it. And so I told my parents, oh, so sorry, we can't come home. You know, so we stayed here. And then I was, you know, when, as I was feeling better, um, we, we instituted this thing called judgment-free grocery shopping. Okay? And I'll tell you what that is. We went to the grocery store together. And judgment-free grocery shopping means no matter what the other person puts in the cart, you don't say a thing. No judgment, no question, just nothing. Like, we just, you just let it happen. So if some Twinkies end up in the cart, you just say, this is happening. Like, we're just going to pay for it. It's judgment-free. So we put in judgment-free grocery shopping for that Christmas break. And I tell you what, the thing about it is we went a little far with judgment-free. Because we, we went a few times to the grocery store. We're buying all sorts of ridiculous things. So then January 1st hits, and we're kind of like, oh, man, we got to finish off. 
these box of cookies. Like, we still got the chips, you know, we might as well. So we're like, we'll push off the New Year's resolutions a little bit. You know, we'll just keep pushing it off. And then all of a sudden you're like, hey, it's March already. We need to get some stuff happening. And I'm sorry to say it happened again this year. We did do it again this year. We did not learn our lesson. But we need to put some things in our life that promote health and healthy rhythms. Schedule some time in your calendar for margin, things that are allowing you to have margin in your life. And sometimes we need to turn down the internal noise. Sometimes it's our own inner self-talk, our inner monologue that we're having. Some of us need to rewrite the script that we're telling ourselves over and over again. And the best way to do that is scripture. I think the scripture has a word for every single negative script you might be telling yourself. So it's not I'm a failure, it's I'm more than a conqueror. I'm not alone, I have a friend in Jesus. I'm not anxious, he has given me peace. Jesus is the prince of peace. I'm not weak, through him I am strong. It's not that I don't fit in, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm not hopeless, I am purposed to do great things. He has called me by name. Fear will not control me, I am confident, and I know who is walking with me. We need to rewrite the inner monologue that are happening in our life at times. To close the gap, we need to make sure we're continually checking our source. Readily assess your source, what is fueling you? Some of us, without even realizing it, we've replaced Jesus with a different source for fuel. John 6, 35, he says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Sometimes we're looking for self-worth and value and fulfillment and acceptance, purpose, nourishment in all the wrong places. Only Jesus satisfies. And some of us, we've let people take the place of Jesus and God in our lives. And when they fail us, which people do, or when they depart from your life or stop thinking well of you or aren't pleased with you, you become uprooted and unhinged because you are drawing from the wrong source. We need to check our source. Whether it's friendships, family, relationship, leaders, bosses, it's easy to, you just, without even realizing, you've changed your source without knowing it. You start drawing upon them what you should be drawing from God. And you've actually made people your idol. And for some of us, it's things or attaining things. We've created this definition of success or climbing high on the career ladder of where you thought you were going to be. And it all of a sudden, it becomes the fuel that is driving you. You know, when we were growing up, we, we had a family of six. There were four of us kids and my mom and dad. And, you know, as we started growing up and started driving, you know, some of us, you know, like my brother would get a car. We'd all have, like, cars. But the younger ki kids' cars, you know, our cars were more like beaters. You know what I mean? Like, it's like a used car. You know, like, but then sometimes when you had a special event, my dad would let you take his car. You know, and I'd be like, oh, my goodness, I'm going to the dance, and I'm driving my dad's car. I'm like, oh, my goodness. They're going to watch me, you know, just watch me work and come in. But the thing about my dad's car is it was a premium car, so it needed premium fuel. Okay, and every now and then I would go to the gas station, and I'd be driving out, and I'd go, oh, my goodness. I put regular gas in dad's car. I put regular gas, but then I went researching what could happen, what's going to happen to dad's car, because I put in this regular fuel. And uh, doing some of the research, it says this. When you put regular gas in a premium car over the long run, there's risk of damaging the engine. And in everyday driving, there's no problem using regular gas. But you, if you often drive up and down hills, premium fuel will make the engine's task easier. And I think some of us have been putting regular fuel. When you're putting people besides Jesus, and you're making them your fuel and your source, right? The ups and downs of life, it's harder on you when you have the wrong source. We need to make Jesus our source and not put regular fuel in a premium engine and gas tank. So we need to make sure we're continually checking our source. Why am I doing this? Am I getting value from the right places? Why is this so important? Am I too consumed with what people think? We need to continually check our source. You know, and for some of us, it's more than a gap between us and God, between us and Jesus. For some of you, it's actually a wall. 
You've created a wall around you and Jesus. And in some cases, there's a wall because you aren't living right, and it has separated you from God. The Bible says your iniquities can separate you from God. And there's where it says separated, it says a wall of partition. Maybe some of the choices that you're making has created a wall of partition between you and God. But he gives us an opportunity to change our lifestyle. We have an opportunity to actually repent. Rather than staying there and keeping that wall, we can repent. Repent means a change of mind that results in a change of lifestyle. And I think some of us just need to change the way that we're living right now. So that that partition, because God is saying, look, I have the answers. I want you to come to me. But we need to get rid of this partition that's between you and me. And some of you, you're angry at yourself for something that you've done in the past, maybe even this week. And you need to just forgive yourself and allow God to forgive you as well. I think for some, we've put up a wall of self-protection. Maybe you got hurt by somebody else. You got hurt by something happening in your life, and you've built up a wall because you think it's the way that's going to protect you, the way that you're going to be able to survive the ups and downs of life. You're disappointed by people. You're disappointed maybe by dreams that haven't happened. Someone else has wounded you. But you got to drop that wall because only Jesus can help you heal. Psalm 147.3, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He's saying, take that wall down and let me come in and help you heal those wounds. The second thing that we need to do to mind the gap is we need to draw near to him. So the first was close the gap, and number two is we need to draw near to him. James 4, 7 says, come near to God, and he will come near to you. And the team can come back up. We need to know him and abide in him. Those that know God, they shall be strong and do great exploits. I think God wants us to be able to do great exploits. We need to spend some time and abide in him. And there's no shortcut. So abiding in him, it just takes time. And getting to know him, it just takes time to do that. Just like any relationship you've ever had, a marriage or a friendship, it takes time to get to know each other. Spending time and being intentional, we need to take that into our relationship with Jesus. Abiding in him involves getting more disciplined about disciplines. And I'm talking about the spiritual disciplines. These are practices that, that are found that help promote your spiritual growth. We need to build those habits of devotion into our life. Worship, prayer, study, being in the word, meditation, rest, fasting, fellowshipping, and celebrating. Take one of those and just pick one. And for the next season, focus on just bringing it more into your life. We've been uh, reading, we've been doing Emotionally Healthy Spirituality as a church um, and it's been really great. We just had the week on Sabbath, uh, which is fantastic. But it was just talking about building these rhythms of uh, a daily office that you spend time in your day, like two or three times of your day, reconnecting with God. You know, not just your morning devotion, but in the afternoon, you take some time to le read the word, pray, and just reconnect with him. And same thing at the end of your day. We need to build in those habits that we're abiding and remaining in him. To draw near to him, we also need to surrender all. Surrender means to yield to the power or control, to give oneself over to something of someone. And I think some of us were such, and I'm, I'm speaking to myself, we're such control freaks. But God really is in control. It's just an illusion of control. And we just need a, a life where we just give it up over to him and say, hey, you're in charge. And I love what Josh was saying earlier. We cast our cares on him. We do this in prayer as you're talking to him. You're reminding yourself who this person is, who this person is that's walking with you into your Monday. And you have your problems, your challenges, the things that are weighing up on your mind, and you cast them on him. And you said, God, you have got it. I surrender all to you. I surrender my plans. I surrender my timelines. I give it all over fully to you. You need to surrender to him. You know, as I was preparing uh, this message, you know, I came across the, the parable of the prodigal son. Because it tells you the story of a son coming back home. You know, and there's a father and his younger son, you know, comes to him and says, Father, give me my share of the estate. 
And long, long after he leaves home, he squanders um, that wealth in wild living. And there's severe famine comes over the land. And he's so hungry, he can't even get the food that they're giving to the pigs. So he said, look, I'm going to come back. I'm going to go back to my father's house and just offer to him. I'm going to offer to him to, to work for him. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your servants. So he got up and went to his father. And this is my favorite part. It says, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. You know, I think so many of us, without even realizing it, and I think it just happens through, through life, like just life normally happening, that all of a sudden there's this distance and this gap between you and God. And God's just saying, I'm just, I'm here with open arms for you. I just need you to come to me. I just need you to come to me. And, you know, we've received so many words of prophecy for our church, you know, words of restoration, words of revival, words of rebuilding. But I think that is a word for us individually. God is wanting to revive some things in our lives individually. He's wanting to revive your strength. He's wanting to revive the relationships in your world, your spirit, your voice, the joy in your life, your soul, your heart, your calling. But it all happens when we come and draw near to him. He's like, I'm going to do the supernatural. I'm going to do the revival. I'm going to do the restoring. I'm going to do the rebuilding, but I need you to close this gap between you and me and come to me. <laughs> Things inviting us. He's inviting us to just mind that gap. And I think as we start to do that, the stories of what God is going to do in our world, I think it's just going to rock us. And I'm excited. You guys can stand to your feet. We're going to worship. Um, and I just encourage you, as we're worshiping, just ask if there's any gap between you and God, if there's ways that you can close that gap in this season. Let me just pray for us. Father, we thank you so much for who you are. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you're the answer. God, we thank you, Lord, that you have open arms to us. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can abide in you. God, and I pray, Lord, on this day, Lord, that you just would show us if there's any distance between us and you. Just reveal to us, Lord, Father, the steps that we need to take. Lord God, just have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I want to just pray for another group of people. Those of you that maybe know that your, your life is not in the right place, and you need to make your life right with Jesus. You know, I was reading that passage and just talking about how he's the bread of life. And he can satisfy any hunger and thirst you have. And um, I just want to just tell you, if you don't know, that God loves you. He sent his one and only son to die for you and me so that you could have everlasting life. And the Bible talks about how powerful this love is, that absolutely nothing can separate you from this love that God has for you. And maybe as I was sharing and talking about how maybe you've, you've, you've set yourself with the wrong fuel. You've been trying to find satisfaction and purpose and objective in all the wrong places but only Jesus satisfies. And I want to give you an invitation in a moment with no one looking around. I'm going to count to three. And if you're wanting to start a relationship with him today and make your life right and make him Lord over all your life and surrender to him, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand long enough and high enough for me to see you. And from some of you here, maybe you've had a relationship with him, but like the prodigal son, you have ran away from home. I'm here to encourage you that you can get your life right with him today. Today can be the new chapter of a new day. And I'm going to encourage you and invite you to raise your hand and just in with the rest of everyone else. One, two, three. Raise your hand if you're wanting to start a relationship or just come back home. God bless you. I see that hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, brother. I see your hand. God bless you, sister. I see your hand, incredible hands going up all over this room. You could put your hands down. And I'm going to invite you to say a prayer after me. And uh, I encourage you, don't just declare this prayer with your mouth, but declare it with your heart. So everyone repeat after me, dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for your love for me. Lord, today I want to get my relationship right with you. And I thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for loving me. By your grace, I am saved. And by your power, I am set free. Today is a new day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we just give a hand to those people that just made a decision? Well, I'm going to invite Josh to come on up. You're going to walk us through the steps people can take if they just made that decision. Thanks, Josh. Amazing. Can we give it up for Tulu Batters? Incredible. Incredible. And we just give it up to God for everyone who made that decision for the first time. It's incredible. Well, you never have to do life alone ever again. Jesus is with you, he loves you, and this church family is with you as well. And in my hand are, are a gift we would like to bless you with. If you did make that decision for the first time, there'll be someone out in the lobby, let us know. And there's a book, it's called The Life of Jesus, which is basically the scriptures of the story of Jesus in order. It's a really amazing read, and it's also in Spanish as well. Vida de Jesus. Hey, hey, there it is, there it is. Ah, I'm getting the thumbs up for my fam here, there it is. <laughs> But don't do life alone, right? I love that message, Tulu. Mind the gap. And isn't it, it's just so amazing that if you made the decision for the first time, you made the biggest step in closing that gap because Jesus stepped out to close that gap with you. So I'm gonna pray for us. And if you need prayer for anything, I want to invite you to come to the front. We are gonna end the service, but if you do need prayer, we wanna pray with you. Uh, if you feel that inkling on the inside, if there's any sickness in your body, there's healing for you here. If there's anything troubling your mind, there's restoration for you here. Don't leave this place still having some worries on you. This is the place to cast all your cares to the Lord. So I'm going to pray us out. Yeah, I do feel like there's a few people that need prayer here. So I'm going to pray. And if you want to come up, you can, and we'll end the service. But Lord Jesus, we love you. God, we thank you that there is none like you, that there, there's no other name in heaven on earth that's more powerful than your name, Jesus. God, thank you that you made the decision to step down from heaven, come to earth, 
Close that gap, Father, so that we could be in a relationship with you. Teach us how to mind the gap. Teach us how to draw close to you every single day. Our loving Father, and Jesus, we love you. We thank you. Bless everyone here. Thank you for an amazing week of open doors, restoration, new beginnings, and miracles everywhere that everyone here goes this week. We love you. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. Amen. We love you, church. Have an amazing week.